Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Happy holidays. Today we have the ENFP live Q&A with Colin, one of my dear coaching clients. And he is an ENFP and an Enneagram 7. Would you like to tell us a bit about you? My name is Colin and I have created a Discord that goes through Type. Uh, hit me up about that. I have, uh, I have a YouTube channel that I'm slowly transitioning from like a religious content Christian channel into a uh, typology channel, hopefully like merging the two or in, in some weird way. Uh, I also, um, that's a little bit about me. So. Mm. Yeah. And so Colin, he's going to be holding discord nights on my discord server. So on Wednesdays nights, he's going to be in the voice channel and we're all going to, chat sometimes because my discord is kind of dead and Colin has a lot of energy for days so he offered to help enliven the chats there and so Colin would you like to tell us a little bit about your dominant function extroverted intuition sure I feel like my any is an endless conveyor belt of of creations an endless conveyor belt of uh, connections that uh my any i feel like manifests a lot of times as um the chaos my my construction of reality inside of my head that i have um a an optimistic charge towards and i i was thinking about also the other um the other ne dominance and the ability to uh go towards the construction inside of our heads um and in terms of making it a reality or making it happen more than other types. I see this specifically when I'm in when I'm in groups. I'm willing to take uh, a lot of risks, take a lot of um, uh, find find chaos and make it new because I'm sick of. I get sick when things are just the known and the given. I I'm not in, I'm not impressed. So I have to make I have to make my own uh, given. I have to make my own new. I have to carve my own path. I have to carve. Um, I have to mark into reality and make it make it chaotic, make it new, or else I feel like I'm wasting my time on earth. Like every breath I have is is uh, like my life is buffering, and uh, it results in a lot of. Um, I really it, it results in a lot of chaos. It results in a lot of um, uh, awkwardness. It's 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 one of my favorite things about myself. It's it's like. Um, basically the hub that makes me creative, that makes me, um, idealistic, optimistic. I, I have a, um, I feel like it also influences my, my open heart as well. So there's a little bit about it. Interesting. The open heart component also links to your introverted feeling too. Could you go a little bit into that? My introverted feeling, I see it as a very deep, um, a very sensitive side of myself. Um, right now I'm in more of a, I, I'm in more of like a TE, more of a TE zone in, in the sense that um, FI and TE are on the same axis and I go back and forth in between. Okay, now I'm more of the TE state, I'm more in the FI state. With FI I get, I can get uh, extremely hurt um, when I'm in just an FI. FI is like my guts and then TE is like my abdomen. Um, and so I can take as many punches as someone wants to give me when I'm in TE, but when I'm in FI, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very sensitive. I actually have, um, it can be easily, I feel like the access point into influencing my FI is via the TE. For me specifically, like someone can, if they can address logically all of my all of the objections I have to whatever they're trying to sell me or or whatever, if they can address all of my objections in a way that is satisfying my FI, my FI values in many times can completely change in a heartbeat and I will change it. But I have that, that it's like a castle with a, with a, a drawbridge. You're not going through the drawbridge unless you talk to my TE first, then you can get to FI. Uh, FI is like the, um, FI is like the, the real guy calling the shots is the most important. It's the VIP. And then the bodyguard is, is TE that's, that's making sure that 
um, making sure that FI isn't being too gullible or being too whatever. Because naturally, if I just had my FI leading all over the place, I'd be extremely uh, gullible. And there's many times, like with my close friends, um, I, I have a friend, or I had a friend that was very um, incredibly, um, just very judgmental, INTP with uh, extroverted feeling, focus on extroverted feeling. And he was um, is extremely judgmental. And I knew what he was saying was complete uh, BS, but I, my FI believed like it, like it was truth. And I had to, I had to learn to protect my FI via um, being okay with disagreeing, being okay with standing strong in my opinions, because otherwise I'll just, I'll just want to believe the person. I just want to be like incredibly uh, open-minded, but TE gives me um protects the FI. So I see them as both um, incredibly inseparable from, from each other to an extent. And um, they work together for and accomplish something great because without my FI alone, I would be a bag of, of, uh, of pain and sadness every day of my life or a bag of, of it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be fun without, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work um, without TE. With Colin, you'll notice that he uses 10 billion metaphors and analogies every time you speak with him. He talked about a conveyor belt, gut abdomen, and he talked about the drawbridge of something without actually talking about a literal drawbridge. And so he is incredibly, incredibly gifted with just weaving in metaphor and analogies into his way of speaking. And sometimes Every time I'll I'll talk to Colin, he'll offer up a new theory on something, a new a new idea. Just he's throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what happens, throwing an idea at the wall and seeing what happens. And that is a part of the chaos of NE, always having these in the moment new ideas. And when you have the middle functions FI and TE together, you create a tag team. So they oftentimes you go between them. Sometimes Colin is, is in a very bubbly and exuberant mood, and other times he's in a very TE mood like he is right now. When he's in the bubbly mode, it's when he feels like being in the bubbly mode. <laughs> but when he's in his TE, he's in his TE. So would you like to tell us a little bit about your aspirational function, SI? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I'm going to switch on to data real quick. Okay. One moment. So push is a more stable connection. Yeah. We repeat the question again. The question is how do you experience your repressed function SI? One moment, let me just <laughs> Wait, is it the um did you say that all the EPs have all the technological problems? Yes, uh especially the FI using EPs. <laughs> Whenever I hold streams, yeah, it's most likely an EP chaos moment. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Yeah, you read the one. Welcome back, Colin. And so I was just asking you about your SI. How do you experience introverted sensing? I would I would like wait, oh no, is it is it glitching? Can can you see me? It's not working. Yeah. I can God, see you. I'm gonna, you can. I, well, can. I can't see you. This is so. That's all right. I'm going to refresh the page real quick. Yeah, no worries. This is like my worst nightmare always. <laughs> Technological problems during streams. I'm like, <gasps> and then I just. Hi, I'm Colin. Here. I'm back. Hi. Welcome. Darn it. It's not working. I'm switching back to the, the other thing. Sure. So this is how you differentiate a TE tertiary from a um, TE dominant type. By showing, by showing around, showing everything here. So this would be an example of like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, let me switch the camera real quick. <laughs> how do you do the other side of the camera in here? <laughs> Is this is this how you tell apart an ENTJ, ESTJ from an ENFP. 
So ENFPs can have really strong extroverted thinking, but they always kind of malfunction their TE too. And they have like tech issues like this on the regular. Uh, ooh, beautiful room, beautiful. Very, it's very orderly, but it's ordered, it's ordered chaos. So this would be an example of my, my SI at play. Um, without SI, you'd not be able to have all this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now that we've seen your crib, how would you describe your SI? I describe your SI. My relationship with it is um, is creating is for me as an extrovert. I feel like it it colors my SI in that I'm thinking of it, and this is kind of a rough draft idea right now. I want to say it anyway. Uh, the I feel like. So when you think about what SI is, it is um, subjective um, sensing, subjective sensing. Uh, it's my, it, it, it takes the senses which I have and it makes it mine in, in a sense, in, in that it is um, stored within my memory, it's like a concrete static thing. And I think that is what I wish to extrovert in the sense of my life. I want something I want that to be in others. I want to be remembered. I want what I have to be stable or, or nailed down. But I want it to be my that which is uh, new, that which is unique to me, F-I-N-E. It has to be something different. But I then I want it to be nailed down with S-I. If I didn't have S-I, there would be no nailing down of the N-E. It would just, it would just be the um, the, uh, it would just be the objective unknown. It would just be total, um, it would, it would just be la la land without any bearing on reality. So I, I'm thankful to have sensing so I can have some, some interaction with the physical reality and not be in a mental institution. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to be able to explore with your airplane in the sky and see all of the possibilities and then come back to a stable home. But sometimes um, EPs with the ENFP, with SI as the last function, they can have a weird relationship with routines. They can either want like kind of dislike routines or dislike institutions, or they can have like some weird selective anal habit of theirs that they're, they need to get this in this particular specific way. So you'll have the variation of disliking routine and, and all of order, and then having very specific order with, with an ENFP. <clears throat> so it's kind of like a spurts of SI. So it's either sometimes neglecting the SI to then over like having a spurt of overdoing it. Also, another problem is um, the if I want to go back to the, the TE thing, if I my TE is turned off and my abs aren't there and someone's just sharing something that's really, um, like if like for instance, if I'm with an INFP or someone who is giving me a moralism or something like, Colin, you're not humble, and they give no premises or anything, but but my I value them in some way, I can go into, I've noticed myself if I do believe that and I don't turn on TE, I'll go into a uh, SI, FI loop where I will spin within my head and be like, oh, where have I been a bad person? And I try to search for something in the past where I was like horrible to like, you know, figure it all out. But it's like, I can't figure out the solution ever with SI and FI. It's like, I need to, I need to extrovert to get to the answer. I need to talk to people. I need to uh, do that. And, but I'll, I'll hung, I'll get hung up on the um, trying to find it in the past, if if I've exhausted kind of, if no one will talk to me or if I just can't uh, extrovert in some way or I can't find the information, then I'll resort to um, SIFI. I'm also haunted by my dreams uh, of the past. Like I, I had, I can't tell you how many high school dreams I've had. It's just unbelievable. And it's not haunted in the sense of it being necessarily negative. It's neutral, but it's haunted in the sense that it's always there. It's also people think of the inferior function as pessimistic. And in my regard, I feel like my SI is extremely nostalgic 
and so it's a corrupted form of memory because you know concrete memory should just be kind of neutral or something but for me it's it's charged with nostalgia it's charged with whatever because in my seeking of the of that which is new i'm actually seeking to make it known and it's kind of undoes itself so i'm i'm so in love with i'm so in love with like making things known in the known that i that which is si is is positively charged with this uh beaming optimism towards the past where even enemies from the past are highlighted um in a glowy uh weird way and it's it's a it's a delusion a comforting it's a comforting delusion in a way and so i feel i feel as though i can't i am only i'm only most positive about the past and the future and the present is always a disappointment i feel like my any gives me um the present yeah is mostly is mostly a, a disappointment to an extent because it's never as good as the any construction in my head it's it's never as good as my view of the past or my view of the future and i'm not necessarily looking down upon that fact of life but i'm because it gives me a lot of drive it gives me a tremendous amount of drive towards the future and it gives me an ability to uh, forgive as well uh, a better ability having like kind of seeing it through rose colored glasses especially mm. when people do something um negative there can be um time can can heal those those uh those wounds so. extraordinarily well explained with nefi there can be a strong rose colored glasses painted over things and so i'm wondering is colin a farmer question mark <laughs> i know that picture makes me look like a farmer because of the hat or whatever it was a photo shoot they were we were doing here. I'm not a farmer. But the plants behind you. I <laughs> you're such in a TE mood right now. If you if you were in an NEFI mood, you would totally have a quick comeback at me. Um are you any are there any characters or celebrities that you relate to who happen to be ENFPs? Um Joyce, tell them what you said the other day. What did I say the other day? <laughs> so Joyce, Joyce said that I was the most NE uh, ENFP she had ever met. And I was like, who do you like, since she didn't know anyone that was more NE than me, then I was like, who do you not know? And she was like, Robin Williams. So I think, I think to that degree, when I'm in my more NEFI state, I'm like Robin Williams. Uh, but if I was going to think that there's someone else, let me think about it real quick. I don't actually relate to many celebrities or, or characters because I feel like I'm so kind of different in a way. It's like very hard for me to relate and it would probably be outside of ENFPs. I don't think I actually relate to ENFPs very well. Um, mm, yeah, especially because you have a four in your tri-type. So there's a sense of uniqueness of identity from other characters and beings. We call it Cullen's NE, when he's in the mood, is so supercharged. It is intense. It, yeah, like, uh, it'll shock people. It, pe he'll lose track of the people around him. They'll be like, what, Cullen, you said that? There, there will be certain days where like, he's a uh, Christian, so he'll just pray for meteors, for you to have a meteor, and for you to have two of them, so you can keep one and sell the other. I forgot, you had a conspiracy theory behind it, too, but it was... <laughs> if you want to share a conspiracy it. theory about it really. or not not a conspiracy theory but it's almost yeah like that's for the censors you had a you had a with. little um story behind why specifically meteors <laughs> well it's more like not a conspiracy theory it's uh premises for why it would be good to the reasons for praying for a meteor mm -hmm. yeah which are <laughs> Oh uh, wait! You don't have to share. Oh, oh, no, you want me to say them? Yeah, if if I'm making you no, uncomfortable, no, they you would don't be, have to share too. Yeah, you're never really uncomfortable. I mean, no, <laughs> you're never gonna make me uncomfortable. That's impossible. I always assume you're never making me uncomfortable because I I I value that's kind of the authenticity part is that I value, for me, I value the authenticity and I value the truth more than I value my feelings, like tremendously. 
um, I, it's very important to me. In regard to the meteor, the, um, not only do I just have a FI value towards, these are so cool. I saw like a, um, a Werner Herzog film on um, meteors. Um, I, I think it was called Fireball on, you can find it online. I highly recommend Werner Herzog's movies. I think those are my, my favorite. Uh, if some, some nerdy people that are watching this could look up Werner Herzog's type and post it here, I'd appreciate that right now. There's my TE angry nun coming out, do this right now. Um, so the, the, the thing with meteors is that there, are some of them you look up close and it's like the most beautiful collection of, of crystals or, or whatever. And you can even, they even like, they had a theory about quasi crystals and then they found actual quasi crystals and like a meteor from outer space and a configuration that doesn't happen on earth. And I mean, it's like, it's so heavenly. It's such a heavenly thing that comes from like, especially I'd want one that comes outside of this galaxy it would be the, like the coolest thing ever. So the fact that I'm fascinated, plus they're extremely expensive. So if I had um, a few of them fall, then I could sell them for money, as well as it just be, it just be something near and dear to my heart from God, like my FI connection to God. It's like, wow, you just sent me something from like, uh, there's just so many levels and it'd be so sentimental towards it. I'd, I'd just like treasure it or like, or I could make it into like 20 different little rocks to make necklaces for all my friends with it or something. I just, when I saw that movie, I just attached to, to meteors and like have some kind of, I've always been someone to look up into the stars into the clouds and, and daydream and uh, do all of that while everyone else is um, on here. I'm, like my dreams are all, uh, it's either the the known, the high school, or it's um, outer space, alien invasions. Like the universe is already colonized and I'm on a ship of 12, like trying to get some components from these planets or whatever. It's always the most wild things that I've never thought about before. And that's, um, and I don't even think about aliens during the day. And so it's like quite interesting. My unconscious has such a, um, a strong, um, personality that's different from me in a way. And I think, I think I have a humility of like a lot of people, what helps people with type. And I think it definitely helped me is rather than letting the ego and I'm defining ego by you, what you think, what you think you're aware of about yourself um, and what you actually are aware of about yourself. It, it can, I think one of the goals is to expand your ego to, to encompass in actuality what you are. And so that's a never ending um, search for me, that FI quest for um, self-knowledge and, and discovery. And that bleeds over into, um, I wanna read this quote that I made um, like two days ago here, if I can find it. You can, you can fill in the space while I'm looking for it, Joyce. Absolutely, yeah, so. I'll just be doing the wave as you try to find it. <laughs> hey, everyone. Okay, that's what I said. I got it. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, um, I feel like, so this is first with FE and then it's with FI. So FE, you reach into other people and find yourself. FI, you reach into yourself and find other people. Um, and then I wrote, uh, when we embrace ourselves, we embrace God. Um, and then I wrote, um, we are a mission unto ourselves. And so I had this idea a long time ago that um, everyone is kind of, um, I think the purpose of life is to um, convert oneself in a sense, convert oneself to, um, to God, to truth, to um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the thing that Colin showed today about FI versus FE and the new way of seeing it that he had, these are theories that he has on the regular. Like he, he makes a million of these connections that no one else has ever thought of putting the functions that way, just naturally with his extroverted intuition, seamlessly. How comfortable are you with, with giving or receiving critiques? I'm incredibly comfortable with that. I actually uh, demand of my friends to always give me like the truth, but I, here's when I'm not, 
um, there is a point. So particularly with me, I'm going to, um, particularly with me, I'm going to be very uncomfortable with people who don't hear me out and then give advice and then get angry at me for um, giving them my objections. So for me, I look to many people, and this is an EP problem in general. I look to many people to be extremely close because of the TE. I look very close-minded. I'm very, I'm very confident in whatever theory I have, and I'm until it's disproven, then I change in two seconds. So I'm like, oh, it was, I'm wrong. I changed my mind instantly. And for many people, that seems um, they get very angry. They don't, they don't understand it. But in regard to if someone, it's like, I, if someone learns how I work, if they weren't learn how I function and they operate. If they're trying to change on my mind on something and they go about it in the proper way, which for me, the way to change my mind would be to allow me to bring up all my objections, bring up all of my TE things. Well, this is this is BS because X, Y and Z, X, Y and Z. And if they say, well, X, Y and Z, X, Y and Z and give su sufficient um, sufficient evidence um, or sufficient reasoning that can convince me of that, I'll change in two seconds. And I'm totally like. The difference between me and a lot of other, I feel like, if I if I people in general is that you can give me um, a choice, and I, I've given a lot of people this question, and uh, a lot of the most of the FI people I ask would always choose to not have this information. Which the information is: Would you rather have all the negative opinions of everyone you've ever met, or or not have them at all? I would always choose to have them, without a without a doubt. And this is actually one of the reasons my favorite type without a doubt is um, INTPs. Uh, because I can totally be like, yeah, that's inaccurate. And we can just kind of stick to the ideas and, and whatnot. So in regard to advice um, or, or critiques, if you give sufficient premises and specific examples, like if you say, Colin, I had, a, I had an ENFP come up to me and like, Colin, you're a shitty person because I was getting more uh, laughs than he was and everyone was commenting on my humor and he didn't give any premises for that. If you could convince me I'm a shitty person with uh, an answer on my objections, I will believe, I will convert. I will be like, I'm a shitty person, you know, that's the truth. Um, if you can TE through my my strong TE shield. And so I am, I am comfortable in that realm when dealing with a INTP or someone who can stick to reasons and calmly and collectively go through and parse through the idea logically, then I can, um, I'm very comfortable at receiving criticism exceptionally. But if the person refuses to hear me out, refuses to even analyze the complexities and nuance and, and multiple variables of the situation and, and seems to superimpose their prejudgment upon reality, uh, no, I'm not comfortable. And I want to, um, I want to, um, I want to slap them in the face metaphorically uh, with my words in a very uh, diplomatic way, like and and kind of um, throw it back at them. Their their arrogance to to speak before they hear, and to um, insist that their way is the only way without reasoning. I, I am not comfortable with people who cannot handle uh, careful reasoning, who cannot handle um, objections to their viewpoints or uh, or viewpoints that are mere feelings without. Um, thoughts at the base of it. I, I find that I find that insufferable unless the person has proven to be accurate in the sense of um, if, I, if they prove to me that their conclusion, maybe an NI conclusion or something is correct over time or um, they're really close to me and have seen a lot from me, then I'll be open to mere feeling. But I, I sure have experienced a lot of my life people who give, um, they give, they try to fix me without even understanding the first situation to begin with. And I just want to, you know, vomit out every word they put in my, in my ear because it's completely worthless to me. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something Colin described in that was the term I labeled the FI 180. And this is most pre prevalent with NFPs. So when you listen to an, some of the NFPs talk, they sound really certain with their TE, that the TE opinion said it's said very surely or decisively in a way where it seems like they're not open for critique, but it's just the way that they talk. They just sound certain because of the extroverted thinking, but then they're actually very open to having their opinion changed, especially if they're an ENFP. 
And so you often have, get like some a, a new piece of information will jump in and then they'll completely 180 their opinion on that topic. And it's very shocking and surprising to someone uh, seeing them from the outside change their it almost seems like a strongly held opinion to the opposite side sometimes. And so pe what people don't know about ENFPs is that they're way more open to having their mind changed than they seem. And so there's that. How did he find who he really is, the true self, the things he truly cares for? Colin? I think that, let's just start establish, how did I find my fake self first? And then Joyce, remind me of this question because I'll probably forgive it halfway, halfway in <laughs> my response. So what does he mean the truly cares for? What are the things that you really care for? So your core values and how did you find that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. When I was younger, I always felt I felt wrong and guilty for being polite. I've always had my own my own values. Um, to where my friend talked about someone who was autistic and being very blunt and honest, and it made me. I had a reaction where I was laughing for minutes because it was so refreshing to me because uh, I feel as though I lived in a world that is just the whole world is gaslighting. Um, and I used to, um, I was raised by an ENFJ and I was in a culture full of, full of FE every, and there was, um, I adopted that. I adopted that. I thought that was morally right. I thought it was morally correct to be FE. Um, but even even if Jace can tell that it's um, if Doms can tell that it's uh, it's for TE objectives and my FE was uh, the objective was being good or whatever. Um, but it's not it's not. I learned that that's not who I am. It's it's not who I am to. Now I don't I don't smile when when other people smile unless I want to unless I'm feeling like it. I don't um, BS the world. Um, I believe FE people are being authentic when they're doing that. Uh, just to clarify, I believe they are being authentic. But for me, it's um, I can be nice to everyone. I can make everyone like me, and want to and hate myself. So I can't I can't make everyone like me and like myself. Either one has got either I've got to hate myself and make others like me, or like myself and make only a minority of people like me. Um, or how, and that's I've chosen the latter because um, a life where I'm not being real is a life not worth living because it kind of to me it negates the purpose of living for me. And the way I came to that was actually through MBTI and all of these uh, analysis gave me an inoculation from the um, moralisms and uh, baseless feeling arguments of. Um, high FE users, um, because the um, because I was raised by one. I'm not talking about uh, in, in general. And when the power dynamic of a FE person is over you and kind of trying to make you like them, that it um, it's giving that effect. Uh, so I discovered my true self in um, much through MBTI, much through talking to people. Um, and embraced it and and learned to accept myself because I used to um, have a disdain for FI because I was taught against it by FE users. I was, I was taught like it was something nasty, something evil. And now it's kind of coming to peace with um, the real person um, on the inside. So that's been... Um, it's been liberating. Uh, it's it's been, um, yeah. Self acceptance is the is a thing that I now major in. I used to be all about self growth, self whatever. And I do want to talk about. I have, I know of an ENFJ, and there's uh, what I know, and he completely um, changed everything about him for his uh, ISTJ wife, and it's like he lost the the thing that he brought to the potluck that he had to bring that was special, which is kind of that NI big picture. 
and at what cost? I think in the type community, people ought to be thinking about what do I need to grow? I mean, in terms of development, I think there's certain things that are beneficial and then certain things that if you're trying to grow it, one has to realize you will lose your greatest thing and you've only got a limited, a limited amount of time on earth. So why would you, why would you spend time towards something that would um, only, only give you um, something that everyone else can do with no problem, but it takes you all your capacity, it takes away all of the best things that make you you just to pour into that and you're tired. So I advocate for self-acceptance and understanding oneself to, to know if you want to grow, where ought you to grow to maximize the amount of efficiency and benefit towards yourself and others that would also happiness and fulfillment would be a byproduct of those selective choices. So I hope that was a detailed enough answer. Yeah, snaps. <laughs> How often do you convince INTJs to go skydiving? INTJs, I'm not, I don't think I like doing stuff. I'm, so I'm, I don't really like, I like thinking about stuff. So with INTJs, I just have like philosophical conversations or whatever, or like um, talk about humanity or whatever. I don't, I'm not really into doing stuff. Doing stuff is, 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 uh, is boring to me unless it has some meaning superimposed upon it. Um, so I wouldn't be doing that in the first place. That's the difference between SE dominant types, so the ESFP and ESTP, who like experiencing the thing more than thinking about the thing. Whereas the ENFP and the ENTP, for a lot of things, are going to enjoy thinking about the thing rather than the, the doing of the thing, which is a, a big difference between these types. And so, hello, Colin. Merry Christmas. And will we be seeing any bubbles in your metaphysical landscape? What does that mean? Bubbles? You can interpret it however you want, Colin. I want to know your NI interpretation. Are there any thought bubbles you have bubbling up in the hot tub of your oh, mind? Oh, OK. That's very helpful. Um, so they're asking present tense. My present tense having any bubbles in my metaphysical landscape? Sure. Okay, let's see what's in my metaphysical landscape right now. One moment. It's the hippy dippy NF stuff. It's that I want to, I want a world in which um, people value deep, friendships and closeness and that is devoid of uh, romance or sexuality because our culture has uh, emphasized that beyond measure. And I want a world in which people um, are family and or, or treat each other as family and have really close connections. And I want a world in which um, people would accept themselves and then find people who enjoy them rather than forcing themselves to um, be interested in people that it takes so much effort to like for them when they could actually, no one wants charity love. No one wants to be cared for because it's you're, you're forcing yourself to do that. Um, and so I dream of a world where people are um, prioritize friendship as much as marriage. And prioritize each other. That's that's what's in my metaphysical landscape. You know, 365 days a year, is that is that vision, because I didn't have uh, friends for years and years and years, and I didn't I didn't have um, I didn't have that, and so I I put a very high um, value on that being deprived of it, and I treasure every every moment that I have um, with my friends because I I know it's. Um, I know what it's like to want to die because of loneliness and having a gnawing loneliness in your soul and how, and um, that life is really as valuable as, uh, is as valuable as the friendships you have in a way, because it's like there's nothing that really matters outside of um, 
uh, connection. And I think deep connections are the point of life and the point of everything, that everything is, is relational, that you, you look at um, the way that we're made. Babies die without touch. The, um, the structure of everything is, is, uh, is, is, is relational. Uh, in its core, Indra's not everything within everything is all is all connected and relational, and there really is no you know object without the subject. There's no subject without the object. They are all interplaying with each other. And the sooner we embrace um, to break down our walls with one or the with one another, the 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 more real life becomes. Because the more fake you are, the more the more lack of reality is is um, manifested to everyone. I think everyone is is a reflection of reality in their own way. And so um, the more we can present the true us, um, the more meaningful life will become for everyone. Because I don't, I don't see, um, I don't see the point of living uh, in wearing a mask. There's, there's no, I don't see any way of, I don't see any point in doing that in existing rather than not existing if I was to wear a mask. There's no, mm-hmm. there's no net positive in that. Yeah. It's an injustice to deprive the world of your essence. So to bring your, bring forth your essence, your divine design, you are doing a favor to the world because there's something that you have that is a reflection of the world that is missing if you don't present it there. I love that NF hippie idealistic talk, your NEFI and that ideal utopian world. I'm all for it. <laughs> how do you think about, how much do you think about old flames? I just want to say in regard to the utopian thing, I think that it's not without reach. It's just one person, the self has to say, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to be a good mm-hmm. friend, even if they betray me. That that And I had a long time ago, I would had a friend that, I've had friends betray me and just disappear out of nowhere with no explanation. My closest friends, multiple of them, or died. I've had my closest friend died and a lot of things like that. And my, um, I felt I felt God speaking to me and he said, love is not a waste. I, I want to encourage everyone to choose to be a good friend because uh, it's, it's worth it. Love is not a waste. So I, I don't want to call it too utopian. I, I want to call it more simple, more it's one's own decision to to make the world a better place and believe, and have the faith that the butterfly effect is real. Have, have the faith that um, you are changing the world and that the smallest things are the most important things. And that if, you, if you're just a good friend in your life and that's all you did, I think that would be a tremendous, I think that will ripple throughout eternity ripple through forever and um i i have faith that 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 will make the world into utopia if everyone if everyone decided to be a good friend um and and truly love that there would be a utopia and it's simply just found within the within the person to give that i think this is why my accessible to them Mm -hmm. this is why my heart melts around nfs i hear that and it's so resonant, so it's it's amazing. There's a few things that Colin said that were super ENFP that you'll, the ENFP archetype will say this phrase again and again, and it's friends are sometimes more important than romantic relationships. And, and the ENFP personality type is the most likely to say that phrase. Some of them may not believe in that at all, but you're gonna hear it the most from ENFPs. And there's, often to a type of innocence to friendship that you're not in it to like have any ulterior motive. You're there because you genuinely enjoy each other. And so that's one of the purest reasons to be together. And there's a lack of emphasis on friendship in our culture. It's all centered around romantic relationships. And so I really enjoy that you pointed that out, uh, Colin. Another ENFP archetypes, archetypical saying you is Long-term friends are a miracle, but temporary friends are the norm. Is there oftentimes you'll have ENFPs who cycle through friends a lot, so they'll have a lot of a lot of 
temporary friends throughout their life. And so having a long-term friend is a sort of miracle. That is the reality of many people's relationships for most people. But this is a archetypical saying you'll hear from the ENFP archetype more often than others. Um, and there's, I want to say something else on those lines is mm -hmm. uh, it's very sad for a lot of ENFPs. Um, I just want everyone in the, in the audience to um, step into my our shoes in that it's it's really difficult my whole life. Um, people assuming that my like I'll get super bubbly and start um, sharing a lot of compliments with someone and they'll think it's some there has to be strings. There has to be something there. Or maybe a user interpreting that it's reciprocal in some nature or something or some other thing. And it, when it's really real, it's it's 100 percent pure. And it literally, we, I feel and we feel many times this deeply. I'm not saying all the time, but in my experience, when I'm, I don't, I don't sugarcoat anything. I'm, I'm more often acid, acid coat things. But when I give a compliment, it's, it's 10,000% real from the depth of my soul. And there's not a, 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 there's not a hint of lie in it. There's not a hint of disauthenticity in it. Um, and it really, really makes me sad. Um, that it's interpreted as, as being um, fake or something because they can't anticipate something to be that real. Or they say, I haven't been through suffering because I am um, I have not lost the child innocence. And so that uh, that's deeply disturbing to me um, because there... I have a lot of optimism towards people and a lot of, um, it, it is deeply disturbing to be misunderstood in that way when it's um, one of the best qualities I consider about myself, that it's um, considered as something I'm using to manipulate people. When it's it's just genuinely, it's a pure expression of love and enjoyment. Yeah, so Colin touches on something called the sad clown syndrome that ENFPs sometimes face. They can maintain their childlike innocence while going through the most horrendous circumstances and so people sometimes have a hard time believing that they went through trauma because they can still have that uh childlike bubbliness even if they've been through hell and back and so how much do you think about old flames i'm interpreting that as uh sure. connections yeah. from the past right yeah yeah my bad I, <laughs> I, <laughs> my uh, do you want me to answer that yeah, yeah, you already okay. answered it, but and then I realized I did answer it. Okay, then yeah. let's go to the next one. <laughs> Do you take on different characters or personalities on a regular basis? Why or why not? What do they mean take on? Do they mean um... depends on the the context of Colin? So, uh, Colin really likes audiobooks, and he is very good at impersonating the accents of of the of the characters in audiobooks. So do you ever take on different characters or sides of yourself or sides of other people? Almost. Do you ever care find different FIs within you? <laughs> I don't know. Let me think about that right now. Well, as everyone has seen, it's the um, TEFI. You're seeing me more in my TE state. Um, and hopefully I'll do an interview in the future where I'll be in a more um, FI state. Um, so that would be that that looks sometimes people actually be very um hurt or offended by that because they'll see the when when they see the fi first and then they see the te thankfully if they see the te first then they'll be pleasantly surprised when they see the fi popped out that i'm actually not a thinking above feeling person um they'll be i mean the feelers will definitely be pleasantly surprised by that uh, but then they will be punched in the gut if they see FI first and they see TE come in there to, um, you know, rain on their parade. Um, so I would say some of the characters I take on, I have this um, mode of expressing my affection that's extremely um, innocent. And it's like Joyce has seen it where I am just start showering compliments on you in a very like cutesy voice. Um, so that would be a personality that I take on. Do I do accents or characters very often with you? Nice. You do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I do that. And why do I do that? I do that because um, I'm ultra dramatic and 
I like being dramatic. I like attention. I like um, all of those things because I think at the end of the day, my feeling is very important to me and I want others to enjoy my unique expression. I don't want others to enjoy to enjoy me in a way that gives up who I am. I'm wanting people to enjoy me expressing myself authentically. Um, and if they don't enjoy that, then I'll find people who do and everyone else can uh, go find someone else because I'm not a vending machine or McDonald's. So. Mm, that's were, a, yeah. a good mentality to adopt because oftentimes there's peer pressure to be something that's not you. And so in a world where every single message or signal is suggesting to you that you should not like yourself. And so you can buy things to make you like yourself. You're able to re reject those signals and to look for your tribe or people who actually accept you for who you are, which is a healthy way of operating and possibly the only way of operating because if you're always living life, trying to be someone else, you will have no energy for the rest of being because you'll spend it all on suppressing your essence. Do you relate to ESFPs? What differences do you see as a result of different perceiving access? I would say the differences would be, I'm completely bored out of my mind uh, with them because I don't like doing stuff. Cause it's like, okay, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. I'm like, you know, unless we're talking about like feelings or humans or something, I'm, I'm completely bored out of my mind. Cause it's like, I'm only interested in, up in the cloud stuff most of the time. Like I'm very extreme in that way. So I just, I can count all the times, I'm going back through all the times in my head where I actually like went on a hike or actually spent time with friends um, or more acquaintances when I actually did something. And it's very, very low on the list compared to if I was highlighting something else. So relating to them, I can relate to the uh, FI and the TE is like the same. Um, it's very similar. I, I see myself in them tremendously. I see, um, you know, the angry nun voice of TE. I, I see it all, but, uh, there's, um, the SE and the, and the, 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 the amount of SE they have makes them incompatible with me. They're going to be completely bored and find everything. Or they're going to be really bored with me, I think, to an extent. Because it's not doing something, it's just like so much up in the clouds, and then I'm going to find them very boring as well. So I, I would say uh, that's a recipe for bored, and unless they're like ESFBs who are interested in intuitive topics or diving into FI, then they're going to be interested. So that, that's my conceptualization right now for my small sample size of ESFPs. So take that with a grain of salt. Mm. How do you interact with other ENFPs in your life? Describe your dynamic with some of them. Okay, with my um, closest DNFP friend, uh, Lauren, she sees herself in me. She's older by like 10 years, and she relates to me tremendously because um, she sees herself in me. I find other ENFPs in general, and hear me out. This is my sample size. This is my opinion only. Um, I find them to be extremely slimy in a way because there's uh, a lack of integrity when it comes to planning. They're just... They just slime. They just slime away like a little slug and don't apologize for um, leaving or anything like that. And and I think for some reason I'm more like a J and I and I always got ENFJ on the test and everything. And I'm very very good about planning and being there and having. Um, I still do procrastinate, but compared to other ENFPs, so I find that particularly particularly slimy and it causes me to respect to dis to not have as high respect a regard for other ENFPs because I kind of expect them to be slimy and like not being, um, if they say something, then they're not going to keep it in my experience or it's not going to happen. Um, maybe I haven't, I haven't met probably maybe healthy ENFPs or something. Maybe that's the problem, but, um, yeah, it doesn't go well. Cause it's kind of like, I just, I just relate a lot more better to the, um, the INTPs and, and the thinkers in some regard. So yeah. And I think yeah. the ENFPs, it's it's because uh, I'm I, I I'm different from them in that I always want to face the hard, dark truth. And I want to look it straight in the face, call it what it is, no sugarcoating, completely 
take it to its fullest logical, con like unpleasant conclusion. And I find a lot of them that, but I probably haven't made, maybe I haven't met mature or healthy versions of other ENFPs. So that might be my problem. So if any ENFPs want to talk to me, reach out to me, please. And we'll uh, interact. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's my, that's how I interact um, with them. They actually, it, they tend to exhaust me. Um, the, yeah, they tend to very much exhaust me and I just give up. I just give up and become introverted around them, I think, or extroverts in general. But I think it was the NFPs I, I like to just give up and just become dead fish and just let them do all the work and it's draining. Oh, that is a heavy roast. I find that with ENFPs, you'll have the ones that are more heavily intellectual and they'll accidentally score on Enneagram tests, Enneagram type five because of that. So many, it's so common that it, yeah, it's a thing. E ENFPs relating to Enneagram five at the beginning of their Enneagram journey is so frequent because of that heavily contemplative side that gets irritated at people who are a little too to that. The other side um, is very surprising, uh, but it, it's a very ENFP thing. And they I, typically and also, yeah. They typically aren't fives, but they they'll test out as fives is what I'm I'm saying. And so, Colin, yeah, what did you want to ask? Oh, I just wanted to give a disclaimer. This is all my very small sample size when I'm giving my opinions. So y'all don't take my opinions as uh, as facts or something about ENFPs or in general. This is just my um, my biases and my kind of um, reflections of the ones that I've met in person. So keep keep that in mind as as well. For shizzle. Do you like the concept of transhumanism or study philosophies? Can someone refresh my mind of that? Um, just so yeah. I'm accurately answering the concept. Someone post about what transhumanism is in the live chat. And how about philosophy? Do you study philosophy in any extent? I study philosophy by having, I feel like my TE devours all the TIs. So I have a very nerdy... Uh, group of friends, INTPs, that I like to um, listen to their philosophies and, and study via them, their mouth and, and listening to them. So I study, I really like Nietzsche. I really like um, uh, geneal genealogy of moralities by, by Nietzsche. I like reading um, anything philosophically deep or whatever. I think a lot of, um, but more TI or no, F-I-T-E axis than T-I-F-E uh, axis, but I have, I like my friends giving me that access, even though it can be too tedious. I like kind of um, when NTs are going into NF topics, then it's interesting. But if it's uh, NT topic by an NT, then you, you've lost me in the in the tediousness of that. Mm. INTPs, <laughs> that's enough said. INTPs are my favorite to, type in the whole world and I can't speak more highly of them and I could I could I could speak highly of them for a five hour session on here in, yeah. in ETL and give all the premises for why I think they're the my um personally to me the greatest type on the face of the planet earth so yeah yeah you'll have ENFPs especially if they're type seven have very exaggerative speech sometimes too because they have dramaticness to them <laughs> and so yeah the, in the whole world <laughs> um what is your opinion on gift giving during the holidays and in general my opinion is um i don't find any connection to holidays because there's no meaning out to me i don't feel any meaning at, in it unless it's being superimposed for instance if i had my friends were like if joyce was like okay let's go to like, God has spoken to me, Colin, and he said, go to the Arizona desert on Christmas and there will be a giant meteor that pops out of the sky that has money in it. Then that would be meaningful for me. But uh, holidays aren't meaningful for me unless it's, yeah, meaning is superimposed. Therefore, um, gift giving is irrelevant unless I feel some FI desire to give a gift. And then I'll give a completely random, like not on a holiday or something, just out of the spur of the moment. So for me, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't participate in that unless my FI is engaged. I don't, I like, I'll receive gifts, sure, but in giving them, 
it's I, I definitely believe in I, I have this principle that I believe in, which is never give me anything that would cause you to resent me ever. I hate that. I hate the kind of reciprocation thing. I, I would say no. Um, only 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 um, give because it's good in and of itself. That's kind of my idea. And so I, I'll um, I like to I like to give because and I like to um, as an expression of overflowing cheerfulness in my heart, I'd like to give and I won't give to anyone if it caused me to resent them It makes a lot of friends very angry at me because I won't reciprocate sometimes or I'll just be very but I, I won't sacrifice that value most of the time and it's going to it's it's very ingrained inside of me and I don't respect people as much who um, resent me because they gave me something or resent mm -hmm. me because they did something for me so yeah how long could you spend indoors watching nerdy documentaries or other activities without needing to go out I wouldn't it convolutes the question to talk about documentaries or whatever. So let me try to dissect the question so I can answer both parts. Okay, we'll start with uh, documentaries. Um, documentaries for me are not enjoyable to an extent, unless it's like uh, Werner Herzog makes his documentaries like movies. And so something with that like FI artsy touch, then it's got to be artsy and, and beautiful and its own unique longing way and so um i far prefer movies like independent movies or whatever to um anything else but uh so in regard to if we ex if we extract out of the question oh yeah they said other nerdy activities forgive me carbon um other nerdy activities without needing i would say i can do nerdy activities with other people i need other people for it's like oxygen for me uh, with other people i can do that indentfully and i think I just realized that I didn't go outside in like two weeks or something or like I'll, I'll just will never leave the house like ever um, sometimes like I never need to go anywhere ever or do anything outside of the house like ever I could live there forever indefinitely and never need to go anywhere or do anything because my mind is all I need um, and I have plants I need I need beauty I need beauty I need plants if I can have those things. There is nowhere else I need to go. I do need fresh air though, but um, and I do have these little quirky kind of things that I need, like fresh air or like I have light therapy glasses that I wear because of like uh, seasonal, you know, depression or whatever you call it, and then whatever. That that is amazing. Uh, there is also another trait of ENFP Colin showed in this, and it was him skip skimming over the details like he read the question but he also kind of skimmed it and so he after he looked again and it was like oh yeah that detail there and, and oftentimes you'll find enfps getting bored with the details and so they'll go like yeah yeah yeah, i get it and then they'll they'll try to like skip to the any of it <laughs> and you'll see that um what drives your curiosity are you usually seeking something in particular what drives my per curiosity is um, God, because I don't see, um, I don't see any purpose in life outside of, um, God. So the, the discovery of truth is incredibly fiery inside of me. And that's why I have tons of INTP friends to kind of, uh, or to dive, we have like six hour conversations where we dive into like the philosophical and the metaphysical and try to, you know, parse it all out and have these deep, um, deep conversations. And for me that there is nothing that makes me more happy or fulfilled than um, that endeavor of pursuit of truth, per pursuit of, you know, the Bible says, hunger, blessed is he who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. And so that hunger and, and thirst is, uh, is uh, the sole source of my being. So the curiosity is fueled by obsession, um, an obsession that makes a lot of my um, friends and people from the past, they think of me as uh, insufferable because most people are not like that. And so my obsessions are fueled by um, pursuit of God in a way, in pursuit of um, 
pursuit of seeing reality, seeing myself, seeing others, seeing seeing everything and, and seeing for what it is. And and I know I have this belief that it'll be deeply practical, that at the end of the day, all of these things will like every logical level of the pyramid is uh, applicable to every other aspect of the pyramid and that everything is deeply connect connected and if you really understand truth it it is deeply deeply practical therefore gives my te the the emph to say yeah this is this is relevant to um, actions and reality and um, is not just studying something to study something it is deeply practical um, even in the most theoretical sense if would you get it right it's deeply practical on, on every layer i have that so therefore i have the motivation to uh, dive into things that others would consider not practical, maybe ENFPs would consider not practical or something. But I have this, um, I have this faith. In a way, I, I think faith fuels my curiosity. Also, I have a belief that um, I'm in a stage in my life of consuming a lot of information and, and experiences because I plan to, um, I plan to be a filmmaker in the future. And so there's a level of, um, I believe I'm fertilizing the the soil in which will grow things that I create. And so that would fuel my uh, curiosity as well. I would think any, of course, would fuel the curiosity because um, it makes us some of the most curious people on the planet that are um, not afraid of risks and consequences in that regard and love to poke the bear and um, try new things. So the any would definitely be part of that. Uh, and many people find me extremely intimidating because I get, I just want to know everything. I do want to know how everyone ticks and, and ask them a lot of questions and just, uh, dive into them because I, I, um, I just have a never ending hunger to, to know the depths of myself and other people as, as far deep as I can possibly go. And so, uh, you can imagine how, how, how fake people or surface level interaction just make me cringe and and at a level that very few people can understand how i'm how i'm cringing i mean it just it's like the most cringeworthy thing i could ever experience like there's nothing like read genealogy of morality by nietzsche and you'll hear the same kind of disdain for I, i'm pretty sure he's an intj so he has he has kind of a mild disdain for badly executed unhealthy fe or whatever he has a kind of a disdain or a disrespect for fe and so that would be my my um It'd be my bias, even though I definitely appreciate FE a lot. But the uh, I've had so many negative experiences with FE users of my life that I'm like very disillusioned and have a negative bias towards it. That's my own bias, and it's not true in reality. And it's one of the benefits of type is that you can separate one's own bias and say this is just my bi bias. Reality is that you know every function is is uh, just as valid as every other and every type too. And so that's been part of the humility that I've gained in and studying type and, and realizing that I'm seeing through, seeing through a, a beautiful delusion um, that is, is giving me an aspect of truth that it, but makes me blind to a lot of others um, yeah, in terms of first person experience. So. That's wonderful. You'll see with Colin, there's a lot of thought experimenting. So the taking a thought and taking it to its extreme and trying to understand it and so on a scale of one to 10, how much do you love your TE? That's a very complex answer It's required with that question, I feel like, because um, if we're talking about an FI connection to TE, I would say it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet in that it's like you're this uh, bubbly little child that is, um, you know, very I in wonder and open to the opinions of the world and and open to believing in people and all of these things and you know the crushing reality of the world. Um, it's like you're this uh, child and then you have a protector that comes in to protect the child and it's, it's bittersweet because 
I'd like I'd like to live in you know a world where I mean TI wasn't TE wasn't required as much, but so it's like I love TEE in the sense that it um, enables me to function in a a fallen broken world. It enables me to um, not be hurt. It enables me to do so much, and so I'm deeply deeply I'm deeply grateful for it. But I feel like it is. Um, I feel like to an extent it is um, wouldn't be as necessary if the world was a better place. And so it's. Uh, I feel like it's almost like a weapon in a way sometimes. So it's like, how do you feel about guns or something? Because like I'm deeply thankful I can defend myself. I'm deeply thankful that it gives me a perception of competence. I'm deeply thankful I can, you know, parse through reality and. Um, I'm deeply thankful for that, but it's like, I wish I didn't have like fangs. I wish I didn't have like to rely so much upon thinking as much to decipher. I wish I could just, you know, be being itself and just kind of um, be or whatever. So I think in regard to the state of the world in which I live, I would say that I would love it and about um, maybe like a five or six or something. Because uh, I, can't, I can't live with it. I can't live without it. Like it's 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 a tremendous blessing. Positives outweigh the bad. So I would say solid uh, a solid six. My FI isn't exactly adoring of it. It's not the most pleasant thing to like it's not the most cute cat or whatever so it's like a very it's like a very angry strong cat that's like very good at what it does but it's not exactly cute and cuddly so i would give it like a five out of ten in regard to fondness of it it's more it's more like i admire the tank for its utility so yeah, I love it in the sense of yeah, it's a great it's a great tool, it's a great utility that I have. So and it's a great shield from me getting murdered. So I do love it. I do love love it in that way. There's an element of it being a protective shell. And so when the introverted feeling doesn't want to get influenced by how someone else is feeling or it wants to maintain its integrity, sometimes the TE will step in and set harder boundaries. So in some ways, it's cool to have it because Colin can have his straightforward moments where he's really blunt. <laughs> but sometimes it can also be a sign that his FI doesn't feel safe to be in the world, too. But it's but it's not only that. It's also it when I'm tired. It enables a uh, the first and third function are going to contribute a net positive thing of energy. Um, and so when I'm just using more emphasizing NE and TE, I'm not losing any energy. I'm I'm, I'm very good. At, it's a very good preserving of energy. FI for me drains me. Uh, when I'm embodying a lot of feelings, FI meaning not analyzing or thinking about feeling, but actually feeling FI, and I think focusing on it to an extent with thinking or doing a lot of FI, st FI stuff is going to um, drain the energy a lot. So I need I need to detach from it in order to get a lot of my objectives accomplished. And so I feel very, very happy in TE. I feel very, er, no, driven, driven. I feel a lot of power from it. I feel a lot of energy from it. To focus on my objectives and to make them happen um, without anything getting in the way, without feeling getting in the way. Um, and so I, I like the power, I like the energy uh, that it brings um, and the drive that it gives me. And so I'm, I'm deeply thankful for it. So. Makes sense. And so do you love NI? Answer carefully. I deeply love NI. I can. I've talked to many INFJs, INTJs, and when I meditate for like, when I shut off my brain for 40, 40 minutes, fifty minutes plus, I can tap into conclusions that are NI in in terms of 
I can't, it's just a conclusion. I can't trace the reasoning. And I just know, I know the things to be the case. Everything comes still solidified. And I would say I, I am in deeply in love with, with that aspect when I can tap into it because it, it uh, saves me from a sea of um, endless possibilities. And I love, um, I love having more certainty. I love having more uh, steady course. Um, I guess that's, yeah, also related to the SI, but I'm saying the, just the strength that it brings, kind of, um, you know, one conclusion or, yeah, it's a, it's a deeply, um, I love the people that it has, they have so much meaning. They always see the ends in things. They're extremely, their, their life is endowed with meaning and I feel, I feel it. I feel the, the meaning. And so. I really enjoy it. I, I really enjoy that um, that function. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, you're not like Robin Williams, more like John Mayer. Is John Mayer an ENFP? So you actually haven't seen me in my other state, so you don't you don't know me yet. So you're only seeing one side. You're seeing a snapshot of Colin. This is Colin's serious side. If you see his bubbly exuberant side, you will see more Robin Williams there. Uh, I don't know John Mayer much at all, but I've heard him typed as an ENFP. And actually like people type him as a four wing three too. So maybe Colin could be a four wing three or he's a seven, he's one of those types, but we will get to the bottom of it. Oh, he's a singer? Yes, it's a I think so. Yeah. yeah. It looks like he's a singer or something. Uh huh. Do you find it easy to talk to people you don't know? Oh, I do and... kind of look like John Mayer, I think, a little bit. <laughs> I think that's what they're like picking up on, that we look kind of similar. Yeah. What were we saying, Joyce? Oh, yeah. The, do you find it easy to talk to people you don't know and why? I find it. I find it, um, me being me is easy. Me making people I don't know like me is uh, soul crushing. So if my objective is to make them like me, then no, I hate it. It's uncomfortable. If my objective is to just be myself, I have no problem meeting new people. I have zero problem um, meeting new people. It, it, it drains my energy in nothing if I'm just fully being myself. and. Um, then that's no problem. So it just depends on my objectives. If my objective is to make them like me, then I can't stand it because most people are not going to like me uh, for, for a million reasons. Mm. How emotionally expressive are you compared to how you and others perceive yourself to be? Can you translate that? I guess just how expressive are you? What was the second part of the question was how they, how- Compared to how other people see you and how you see yourself. Oh, how do I see my own, how, so self-expressive, is that what they said? So, emotionally expressive, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me think, emotionally expressive. Um, I would say it's a one to one correlation. I see my I'm extremely I've been criticized by someone as being too objective. So my perception of how emotionally expressive I am would correlate with how other people um, see me, which is quite, quite extremely emotionally expressive. You're, you all are not seeing it too much in this call, even though I have been very emotionally expressive, but you haven't seen the, the full range of it more the uh, one flavor of it. So I think the, um, I think it's a one-to-one -one correlation. I think I really see it as clearly as other people see it because I ask, I dive into other people's opinions and ask them to be very authentic and tell me what they see me as. So I think, which is um, very expressive, dramatic, um, childish at times, extreme black and white. Um, extremely positive, extremely negative, colored by a delusion, 
Um, but in a way, it's seeing a aspect of truth, so it's not a delusion. But in a way, it is because it's not factoring in all all aspects of consciousness. Yeah, Colin, he has a side of himself. So you're seeing 0.01% of Colin. This is one of his states of the many flavors of what you can find him in. There's a state of Colin where he's extremely expressive. It's just not shown right now. <laughs> a little bit was shown. A little bit. Yeah. Little spurts. Because I'm feeling very, I'm in a darker mood. I'm in a more um, guarded and um, melancholic, melancholic mood right now. So I'm not hiding it. I don't have any kind of um, fear of influencing people negatively in that. I think they should see everything because they'll get to see my unbelievably cheery side in the future, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the suspense is killing everyone. How did he find his ideal lifestyle, his daily preferences, growing SI in healthy manners? Oh, these people come up with such complex questions. Good job, everyone. Really stumping me. Uh, how did he find his ideal lifestyle in his daily pre preferences? So that would be, so the assumption embedded in the question is that I have found an ideal lifestyle. Um, why is he assuming that, do you think? So it's it's a, I guess maybe you can comment on how you're not living the ideal lifestyle too, or you could come, you could go any way with the question. My daily preferences. It is I hard. I feel like I'm, I'm mostly living to an ideal. I feel like I'm mostly living to my ideal. The only thing I change is like, I need more really intense people. I already have a few, like uh, my NTB friends and whatnot, but I need, I want, I want to create, what I'd like is I want to create a community that kind of is um, intellectual and then bridges that with religion, the spiritual and, and really intense um, interactions and relationships. And that would be an ideal. Right now, I just have just very few kind of people like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. daily preferences, I'm able to, um, I'd ideally like to try new foods every way, every, every day and go to a new restaurant every day, but I don't ever eat out like hardly ever unless someone else like takes me. So it's actually very boring, um, in that way. Um, growing SI in healthy manners. I, I would say I grow my SI, um, memory recollection. Like I will go back inside of my head and I actually seem to have better recollection of SI than, a, than INTP in terms of I'll be able to recall a lot of stuff. I think because it's deeply important to me what we're talking about. Um, I don't actually value her. Joyce, how much do you think I actually value SI consciously? You're always anti-SI sometimes if the establishment doesn't is, isn't an authentic expression of individuals, you will go against it. <laughs> It's so like, I, yeah. you'll, you'll have moments of um, FISI, so your emotions will be heavily tied to certain totems. But there are certain moments where SI will conflict with NE. So you'll, you'll actually ask a lot of questions like, why is it this case? It makes no, like, it, 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 it doesn't feel right to do it this way. And so oftentimes, sometimes when the SI gets in the way of the individual, the FI or the NE freedom, there can be this pushback. Uh, oh, I have something, I have something. Um, the way I grow SI is by doing any all the time. That's actually end up, I value SI so much that I only do any most of the time because I'm about making all the any, you know, with my little butterfly net, trying to make it known and make it mine and make it in for everyone. And so, I grow my SI by, I'm, I'm, I'm transitioning my channel into typology and everything. That would be how I'm growing my SI. Staying steady on, uh, I, I multitask. So when I'm doing like cleaning or something like that, I'll always listen and take in new stuff. So I'm not uh, just doing SI. So SI to me is um, by staying steady with things, staying, um, putting uh, a routine in what, I'm, in what I'm doing, like meditating every day or whatever. So yeah, but I'm not really, 
consciously like, oh, I need to grow SI or whatever. I'm not, I don't necessarily care about that. It's just, I want SI in, in reality. I want SI there. I'm not obsessed with creating routine or, or something like that. I think it just happens naturally. There's not a like conscious liberated effort. And I'm not convinced yet that obsessing over my fourth function is going to make me a better person. Um, I'm not yet convinced of that. Um, what people keep saying all the time. Mm, so you don't like I'm not sports. against it. I'm just saying in terms of me consciously working at it. Um, if I'm just I'm focusing on my objectives, I feel like it'll naturally happen if I'm driven towards my objectives. I could be wrong on that. So that's just my perception right now. Mm, yeah, well, well explained. Sometimes ENFPs might have an SI routine that helps their TE be a little bit more efficient too for some of them. Uh, so you don't like sports? Question mark. Ask. Sports are the worst. I, I can't stand sports. It's like watching grass grow. I can't watch any sports. In regard to playing sports, um, yeah, it's completely meaningless to me. I find I find I find as much enjoyment as that as I do uh, like washing the dishes. Have you noticed any patterns or connections between types and relationships, friendships and work relationships? Can you interpret the question? <laughs> yeah. Do you notice any pairings that happen typically in friendships, work or relationships? Pairings related to me or in general? Sure, relating to you. Relating to me. Patterns in what way? What kind of patterns do, do they want? What do you think? Patterns. How the different types relate to you? What is I your relationship? that uh, sensors think I'm uh, irrelevant, that everything that comes out of my mouth is irrelevant and completely uh, a waste of time and not seeing reality. Um, that's a pattern. Um, so another pattern is that uh, I seem to trigger everyone because I just ask questions. I'm like, okay, that doesn't seem accurate because X, Y, and Z. And uh, most people seem to be very offended by that because of my manner and the way I speak or whatever. But I notice that INTPs, and I can be myself and they're not going to be triggered by it. And I can just, because I'm naturally extremely direct and straightforward and I just want to analyze the truth of other people calmly and collectively. And that is, um, well, I want to do it emotionally, but calmly and collectively in the sense of being able to reason through it and parse it out. So. My pattern is um, INTPs are tremendous and their ability to accept me beyond FI people. I seem to have, I seem to um, not do too well with a lot of FI people um, in, in many regards. I think that um, I see patterns of um, People that are very strange or have been rejected by a lot of people for being different really find a lot of comfort in me and, and really that seems to work out. But people who have not gone through a lot of suffering, uh, who don't, um, who are accepted, they kind of, uh, they don't like me. Uh, that's another pattern. I think another pattern would be um, those who want Those who are ready for, who value truth and reality and honesty will value me tremendously, even though it might be painful, but they value me tremendously. And those who don't value that, um, their unconscious uh, manifests itself in, in um, them running you know, 10,000 feet in the opposite direction because they're scared of intimacy. They're scared of seeing themselves accurately. They're scared of uh, going into meaning and depth for instance, intuitives that have rejected the search for meaning and for the sake of uh, fitting in um, would find difficulty with me. Um, and then there's a pattern of, um, there's a pattern of, uh, there's a pattern of, I see in our society types, uh, Mm, okay, that's all. Mm, yeah. So Belinda Barron's she's creating a system 
where she's bringing the quadras into MBTI. And so the name she has for the NFPs and the STJs is authenticating. And so you'll hear in Colin's speech, a lot of authenticating what is valued and not valued. And you'll, you'll hear those strong notes of, of those functions there. On another note, do you relate to ISFPs in a similar manner to ESFPs or does the order of the functions make a significant difference? So how do you relate to INFPs, Colin? Do you find that you share a lot in common with INFPs or does the ordering truly shake it up a lot? The problem with INFPs in my personal small sample size, so take it with a grain of salt, has been, um, I had one friend that's an INFP tell me that I wasn't going about relationships the correct way because I was very analytical with it. And I find that deeply disturbing um, that I can't, I can't seem to reason with them sometimes. Um, and from my sample size, I'm not saying all INFPs. And um, I'd like to meet some healthy, healthy ones probably. Um, my experience is that, uh, yeah, one of the bad experiences is that um, I don't feel like I, I don't feel like they're actually seeing me. I feel like their mind is taking away me and then they're just seeing that and like falling in love with that and I just yeah I don't feel like they actually see me I think they see some construction of me inside of their heads and everyone does that to an extent but yeah they seem to really do that so it's it's kind of like and then I just there's an extreme level of there's sometimes in a uh, they can tend to be hypocritical so it's like difficult having that judging function first and then and then perceiving so with them um it makes a significant difference because i think enfps can tend to be a lot more open-minded than infps are a lot less um a lot less judgy so i think i think it makes a, a massive significant difference because um extroversion and introversion are going to radically change every single function in the entire person and and that first function colors every single function in the entire the entire stack so it makes a significant uh difference every every type is a, is a world different than every other type um and i would say that i think that um it seems to me almost like yeah i just see the incredible differences of each type so i, I don't i see it making a, a radically different difference yeah your first function is your water, it's your air, or it's predominantly <laughs> your force field. It's so encompassing that it, it filters, every other function you have filters through your dominant function. So it creates a whole different flavor. Carl Jung originally had eight types. So he would just divide the types by their dominant functions. That's how severely different they are, depending on what they lead with. And so, Colin, you mentioned this important kind of common ENFP struggle where people will see like the bubbliness or the funness that an ENFP can bring to a dynam dynamic, but they don't see the rest of the ENFP. So that kind of fades out into the background. And so oftentimes the ENFP is like, oh, people like me for that bubbliness I bring to dynamics, but they don't actually know me, me. It's this awkward divide between who you really are sometimes and how fun you are to other people. And it's like, oh, people actually don't truly, truly get me. It's like the Marilyn Monroe quote. We just, we want to be loved at our worst. We, we don't, we want to be loved at our worst. And, you know, if you don't love me at your worst, you don't, sorry, you don't love me. Bye. You know, you're not a good friend if you only love my good side. That's kind of my way of, that's my way of, uh, of viewing things is that, because I do that. I love people. I, I can isolate I got a friend who died and she was uh, had a million bad qualities, but her good qualities far outweighed her bad. And I could isolate, sit there and say, yeah, she was horrible in X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. And she was the best more than all of my friends in this area. And I can sit there and I can isolate the good from the bad and call the bad 100% bad. Even if she's you know, the most amazing person by everyone's standards, I can sit there and call the bad as bad as it is with no sugar cutting. And then I can do that with also the good. I can say the good was better than anyone. I can fully encounter the good, fully encounter the bad, and hold the person in 
a high regard in kind of seeing, okay, how much good, how much bad, what's the overall net positive. And I, I don't feel like other people are able to do that um, as well as I can like calmly and collectively do that. I also have the ability to hate and love someone at the same time. Um, I think that is another part of me. Yeah. Yeah, there's this element where, because I thought FI has this connotation with authenticity, it wants to know you in your authenticity too. So it wants to know like all of your flaws, all of your warts and accept it and love you as you are uh, with it. So that's a common element. How often, how does your Enneagram type change how you think or use your functions in relationship to other ENFPs? So we're still narrowing down on Colin's Enneagram type. He's either a seven wing eight or a four wing three. And we're still trying to fully parse that out. His, his tri-type is some combination of four, seven, eight. And so how does that change how you appear from other ENFPs, Colin? Well, why don't we just address the broader question of since we don't exactly, we, we haven't parsed that out fully, maybe I'll give my incomplete parcel of it right now. Um, no, I'll just give the general, how am I different from other ENFPs? I would say that I'm far more any than other ENFPs, um, according to Joyce's opinion. Yeah. And, and my own opinion. Um, and I also I have a lot more intensity. I have a lot more willingness to take the idea to its fullest logical conclusion and stare it in its evil face. I have no problem seeing the truth in, in any idea, in anything, in, in, in terms of the, the whole card truth. I will look at it straight in the face and I have a fearlessness with that. Um, and like, I'll go and I'll, like, I really appreciate like notes from the other by Dostoevsky, um, making known to a man what he would not admit to himself or other people. I love that kind of thing and seeing the darkness for what it is you know, kind of diving into the shadow. So I have um, a propensity towards that, um, which I think some ENFPs do, some some don't. Um, I think that my, uh, the thing I can talk to Enneagram is the sexual instinct. I'm like uh, very, very instinctual sexual variant first. Very, 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 very. I'm like, have this uh, kind of vampiric, urge to like connect with people and have intensity and it's like um animalistic in a way it's it's uh i have extraordinary amount of passion that's i felt very weird when i went into this world because um i find a very 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 low number of people have the same amount of passion and zeal and zest i have for um things i'm passionate about and it's kind of like batman it's like what i've been hurt with and i have a tremendous uh, insatiable passion and obsession towards that thing so I think that makes me a very uh, relentless, um, severe, intense, um, dark ENFP in a way, and a um, everything to excess. You know, excess is you don't have enough until you have more than enough. A very, you know, drink ten thousand, drink life ten thousand times ten thousand, or you're not doing it right. So it gives me a um, I feel like with many NFPs that I would, yeah, there's a level of, I'm a lot more driven. I'm extremely driven in some ways more than other ENFPs. I think I'm, there's a lot of um, drivenness and um, yeah, I think I've developed my thinking more to where it's equal with my FI, my TE is equal with my FI, and I feel like that's not the trend with ENFPs. I think it would be more common in, um, yeah, that's, that's that. Uh-huh, yeah. So Colin is most likely sexual social in his instincts. And what would you say are NT topics as an example? I would say talking about how to fix an exotic particle generator the device that doesn't doesn't even exist trying to parse out the philosophical and uh, mechanical um, parts of that something that is uh, getting into the tediousness of like 
politics in terms of its function and and how it relates to like philosophy diving into philosophy like any kind of philosophy group is going to um there's a level of disconnecting from getting so tedious in the details that they have lost kind of humanity as a whole um losing the heart of humanity and to the details of all of the mechanisms of everything and detaching from people and just kind of looking at the conceptual that is my perception of 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 an NT topic, something that's more um, scholarly and and carefully uh, constructed, um, that's less uh, less ooey gooey or um, less connected. I think NT subjects can in hum can include humans, but may not include humans. With NF subjects, I think it will always include humans and never not include them. Uh, the majority, fifty one percent plus, that seems to be my conception of this. Yeah, I 10,000 percent agree. NFs tend to want a subject matter that like has to connect back to human beings, and there is going to be an ooey gooeyness, a warm fuzziness to an NF. Um, whereas NT topics sometimes they get super technical uh, to a point where it can be a little bit uh, for for the NFs if it's too NT the topic for a long period of time. Hey, Colin, I noticed you say I like a lot. I noticed ESFPs do the same. Do you find yourself making value judgments on certain things without feeling the need to explain it? Could it be an auxiliary FI thing? Would you agree with that uh, perception, Joyce? Well, I find the types that don't need to justify what they like the most to be the SFPs. Because when you have SE plus FI, SE is just like, well, it's an experience. And then the FI is just like, I like it. And so you're going to have the type most correlated without having to need a reason to like something to be the SE FI people. Whereas it gets a little complicated with the NE FI people because NE is very verbose. <laughs> and so it can brainstorm or ideate possibilities for why it likes things, but it may not be able to like explain really, really why it likes something. Like the core of FI is languageless, but Colin does say strong statements that indicate stuff that he does like and stuff that he does hate. And so you will know from talking to Colin, you will be able to parse out his passions or his grimaces at things very easily. As he talks, you get to know Colin more. So you do get to know his value judgments more. But what in are your thoughts? To, yeah, in regard to explaining the um, choice, haven't I been adequately able to always defend with premises why I like what I do in every circumstance? Yeah, yeah, and I find ENFPs in general, they can do that too. And so yeah, there's, not, there's not one thing that I can't defend my FI to the death. Yeah, in, in arguments yeah. And, and give you a giant 10,000 page essay on on why, when, all the details, why I like something in tedious yeah. detail and sell something yeah. on that. So. Yeah, and that's the N-E-T-E. -E. With extroverted intuition, it is literally a 10,000 page essay. Because <laughs> the FI doesn't want to be misinterpreted, right? So you don't want to convey yourself in a way where it's untrue to yourself or it doesn't actually properly convey your FI. And so the NE is going to be verbose in trying to explain the FI properly so it's not misconstrued or bastardized in any way. Does every ENFP have epic vocabulary? <laughs> what are your thoughts, Colin? I wish I knew more ENFPs. Yeah, I don't think Colin, I know too many ENFPs in general. Yeah, Colin has epic metaphors and analogies with everything. You, you'll hear a new, never heard of before on the planet type of comparison. So SI and NE is very good with compare and contrast. And so Colin is the most entertaining person to hear his nuanced thought on things because you will- Like I'm like the most boring, boring side of myself during this entire call and you're like saying that it's so funny yeah. <laughs> yeah colin he came into this call saying joyce i'm in my te mode and i'm like wow he, he <laughs> this is way more serious than typical colin hi justin hi justin's an hi. IP, so that's why my fi is like kicking in yeah 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 colin is now 
fangirling over the INTPs. Do you think about your own your own future? Do you have a vision or plan for yourself 10 years from now? It's more of a, um, I do a lot of uh, prophecy and, and I have a lot of friends that hear from God and I'll verify it by hearing what, if they hear what I'm on the inside, then I'll know that that's kind of the direction God wants to take me. So in regard to that, I would say it's not my construction of my future. It's more God constructing it and then me going along with it. I see myself in 10 years. I don't, I can't put a time limit to it, but I believe in my future, I'm going to be a filmmaker. I'm going to have um, kind of merge intellectualism with religion in a way and kind of have a, a small group of people um, in that because I don't like big groups or whatever because um, it's not intimate. And I would say I do think a lot about my own future. I'm very nostalgic about the future in a way. I'm very, it's very glowing and optimistic and um, exciting for me. And I think religion plays a very strong role in that. Got it, got it, good. Do you perceive a mutual adoration from INTPs you know? Do you experience any friction in that dynamic? I would say that they don't understand sometimes because of FE, they don't understand that it's um, lacks recipro uh, reciprocal nature. I'm not expecting anything in return for adoring them. There's no uh, tit for tat, there's, no, there's none of that. Um, so I would say that um, it's very hard for them to receive receive love or to receive anything sometimes. And so um, the adoration, I think, comes as they get to realize that I bring something no one else brings. Very few people bring the kind of um, realness, authenticity, and enjoyment of them, as well as all the any um, possibilities. With my Among my um, INTP friends, they, um, I feel appreciated more than all my other friends. I, I feel an appreciation because there's a, there's such a warmth from, from the FE that I get. And there's such a, um, I feel like I bring them a lot of utility as well as it is a feeling thing as well. And so for me, I, I, I know what INTPs are. There's not friction because I, I know what they are. I know their limitations, I know their weaknesses. And so any... I know the way that they show care and I know all of those things. So understanding the type, understanding the limitations of the type makes me appreciative and, ha and lower my standards to, okay, they're being really awesome right now. And then it makes me cry. So I think um, what we need to do is lower our expectations ba based on the person to what their type is, you know, and you, like that Einstein quote about a fish climbing a tree, right? So you have to um, lower your expectations to the type and then be deeply grateful and so there's zero, there's zero uh, friction uh, with that me adoring of INTPs. There is friction in the sense that they get uncomfortable for that FE reason I said, and they get uncomfortable because it's also NE, it's very out there, and they would never do it. But the, it's a net positive with them. It's always a net positive, and so the, the pros outweigh the cons. Thus, I am a good friend. So it's inconsequential to me, the, the discomfort of that they have is both inconsequential to them and inconsequential to me because of the positive net worth of everything is far surpassing that. So. Deep and thoughtful, ENFPs and ENFJs can appear similar. Do you know any ENFJs? Yes, they can appear very, very, very similar. In fact, a majority of people who come to typing services, they're actually debating if they are the J or the P version of their type. And, you know, some people may be like, but they have totally different cognitive functions. How could you possibly confuse them? They actually appear so darn similar for some of them. And so you'll have people who share NF values. So you'll hear general NFness. And it, 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 sometimes it's difficult to parse apart if it's NE or NI. For Colin, it's it's obviously NE because he, he talks a lot. He rambles a lot. And it's in this expansive fashion. So with NE, it has a specific flavoring of tackling multiple different topics from multiple disciplines and crossing them together in this beautiful popcorn style that is 
very obvious with some ENFPs, but for others, it can appear harder to parse apart, which is why there are so many Russell Brand wars where there's a branch school of thought that th that is on team ENFP for Russell Brand and there's a branch for team ENFJ for Russell Brand. And I'm personally on team ENFP for Same. him. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. So it always happens. This confusion is the end of time confusion. Uh, but your thoughts? Colin? I want to talk about my, I have like, um, I have, my dad's an ENFJ. I was raised by an ENFJ. And my, uh, I know, uh, I have five ENFJ, current ENFJ friends, um, male, ENFJ male friends. And yeah, so I'm inundated with ENFJs. I think that um, it's uh, the similarity for me that I don't see the similarity. It's like, and in, in, in the NF fact way of it, but to me, it's uh, it's a way slower than the way I work. It's, it's tremendously slower. Um, thinking drains them. For me, thinking is in a positive network of energy position. It's third function and first function are giving me energy. For them, it's draining their energy. So they're, I talk to the NFJs after I'm talking to them and it's like, they really get drained. They enjoy it, but it, it drains them. And so, um, I can clearly tell in their facial reactions that they're ENFJ, the, the, the way that they're, they emote and just their being. And I deeply enjoy it. It's deeply comforting. Um, but we're not on the same footing with thinking because it exhausts them. I would say we could be, but it, it's just when one person is deeply is, is drained by it and the other person is energized by it, that creates an, um, an imbalance where you're probably not going to be going at it to the same degree unless they're really striving to work on that part of themselves. So I, I can clearly see, um, clearly see, a, um, I can see an ENFJ a, a mile away um, from an ENFP. Yeah, you're astute seeing the differences. Do you think at some point in human progress, we will run out of truth and the only thing left to do is just live life as a performance? Oh. Let me think about this. Um, I love these deep questions. Your your audience is very deep and wonderful. By the way, everyone who's everyone who's on Joyce's channel, please go and like all of her videos. Please support her and leave comments and just shower her videos with with the love and please support and share her channels. I I take all of her videos and I share them with, after I type somebody, I go and I send them Joyce's channels of multiple versions of the type and have them choose which one resonates with them. I think that her ideas is, is are, are brilliant and that she deserves every bit of support. So y'all buy her a coffee, go and support her online and and you know, just, you know just shower her with all the support in the world because this is she's doing god's work so that would be the best uh holiday present ever so i would massively appreciate that and our christmas money people <laughs> christmas money <laughs> Already and i want to answer that question i want to answer oh, that okay. question. It's so <laughs> deep yes, yes, angry yes. Nun coming out. <laughs> Joyce is scared by my TE sometimes because it's so intense. It's yeah. Very, it's very menacing. It's like she said it's like an ENTJ's kind of uh, intensity, right? Yeah. I think that at some point, um, I think at some, I believe in some point I'm very religious and I think that at some point when the knowledge of the glory of God fills the earth as the waters cover the sea, there were, there were only, um, I think there'll be a deep peace in the heart of humanity. And, and I think there'll be, um, there will be yet new things to create and discover and endless possibilities. And so I don't think, I think the, the experience of truth is, is eternal. And I think that it will never get old. And I think that, um, in regard to the last question, I, I don't know to what extent we'll be there will be not new knowledge to, to learn. So I, I don't know.
Mm. And so thank you everyone for attending this live Q&A with the wonderful Colin. He has a YouTube channel that I will link below once this stream is over. And he's also going to be holding meetups on my Discord. So if you want to join the voice chat of my Discord, that which is also linked below, you can chat with his wonderful NE and you guys can talk for hours and hours until you guys get tired. But uh, as intuitives, we enjoy our conversations, a lo our long philosophical, abstract, conceptual conversations. So feel free to stretch Colin's mind and give it some elasticity by giving your wonderful takes along with his wonderful takes in the Discord voice chat on Wednesday nights. And I'll drop in sometimes too. And thank you everyone for the wonderful- Can I say one thing? Yeah. Also, I'm looking for more INFJ friends as well as I wanna to put together uh, panels of, of INFJs uh, for my channel. Uh, especially in regard to, I just want the world to get more information about Jesus in terms of uh, that typing. So uh, hit me up as well as um, ENFPs. I don't have too many ENFP friends and I think that'd be fun to connect um, as well as um, I, I did. There's uh, I created, but my uh, Nathan is leading a psychological types. Carl Jung, you can go go to hit me up for that discord where we once a week go through the original uh, Carl Jung's original ideas for the functions, and I think uh, the type community is in, in need of going back to the to the sources of, of those and getting a more. Um, in my channel, I plan to keep in mind, if you go to my channel, right now it's all religion, but it's going to be transitioning into typology, um, typology, and then typology and religion. So it's going to be a, um, a multiplicity of things. Mm hmm. Yeah. And so feel free to check that out and have a happy holidays, everyone. I don't, like like I said in the last stream, I don't really have a close connection to my own family members in my life. So I consider the people in my streams or people in the live chats or the ones that I meet through coaching to be my chosen family. And so it fills my NF heart to have you all in my life. And we'll see you all in the next one. Bye.